Emotion is one of the most important things that you'll ever use when presenting and there are a number of reasons why that is. Firstly, emotion fixes memory. Emotion moves memory from short-term storage into long-term storage. If you just try and think of the times that you've actually had a really strong memory of an event, it's usually connected with a very strong emotion. It's one of the reasons, actually, why as we go through life, time seems to speed up. It's not because the proportion of each day is, is a smaller proportion of our lives. There's that sort of idea going around and has been for some time. It's actually because we're not laying down as many firm memories as we did do when we were young. So you can probably remember your teenage years with absolute clarity. You can probably remember your teenage years, the highs and the lows, the happiness, the, the joy, the absolute heartbreak of that first relationship going terribly wrong. Going to college, going to university, it seems absolutely fixed in your mind, absolutely clear. And then when you get past that point, well, we don't really have those highs and lows of emotion anymore, unfortunately. What does happen is life just carries on and it all sorts of melts together and it seems like every day is spinning away. All of a sudden it's Christmas, Easter, Christmas, Easter, Christmas. It's just this in unending cycle of time sweeping us along simply because we're not laying down as many firm emotional memories as we were doing previously. Because every day when we were young was a new emotional memory. So that's why emotion is important in a functional sense. In a personal sense, we're very much beings that respond to emotion. We look for emotion in other people, we look for emotion in our lives. And when you use emotion as a presentation tool, it means that that memory is going to get fixed. You are going to be memorable. Um, in my broadcasting career, I probably interviewed around 20,000 people. It, it sounds a lot, but actually over a 20 year career, it's, it's not that many. And there are very few that stick in the mind. I remember the ones that were, you know, for me personally, very interesting. So those, those celebrities, those actors, those stars that I've been interested in very deeply. But the other ones that stick in my mind are the ones that have filled me with emotion, that have taken other people's emotion and I've had that emotion as well. That's what you're trying to achieve when you're presenting to an audience. Now this is a story that I, I tell sometimes when I'm training on emotion. And it involves a chap called Pete. Now I was interviewing Pete as part of the campaign for World Mental Health Day. And I went to Pete's house and we sat drinking tea and Pete told me about his mental health problems. And he said that when he was a youngish man, you know, in his 20s, he heard a voice in his head. And the voice said, I think you ought to go to the doctor. And he thought, that's a bit odd, because that wasn't me. That, that was a voice in my head. That, that wasn't, I wasn't thinking that. So he went to the doctor and found that he had a renal problem. He had a problem with his kidneys. And from that point on, every now and again, in times of difficulty, this hugely reassuring voice would come into his head and give him some idea of the next thing to do, would help him with his difficulty, would make him feel better. And his voice became a friend over the years. His voice became something that he would almost look forward to hearing. And Pete got married and he had children and he never told anyone about this voice in his head. Well, you wouldn't want to, would you? Then one day, time started to get a bit tricky. There were difficulties at work, there was stress in the family. And another voice came into Pete's head. And this voice was a bit snide and a little bit critical and snarky and unpleasant. It's very much the opposite of the voice that he'd already been hearing, the voice that he, he, he really felt was a friend. And this voice, as time went on, started to take over from the positive voice, from his friend, and start to put him down in his own head and start to criticise and start to tell him things. And it started bringing him to quite a low point. And he told me, while we were drinking tea in his living room, that one day he was driving home from a late shift at work and the voice came into his head and it said, go home and kill your family. He stopped the car 
got out of the car and he threw up got back in the car drove home and for the first time ever he told another person about the voices he'd been hearing he told his wife that for years he'd been hearing a voice but another one had come into his head and it had just told him to go home and kill everyone within hours Pete had been sectioned under the Mental Health Act. He'd been taken into protective custody to protect himself and protect his family. And he knew it was going to be a long slog of getting well, and his family knew that, but they were very supportive with him. And he was put on some very major medication, he was put on to some drugs, he was taking those, and I still remember. I still remember the moment that he looked at me he had tears in his eyes he said the worst thing about getting well again the worst thing about the drugs working was that it took away his best friend we sat in silence for a couple of moments I had tears rolling down my face so did he And it's something I've never forgotten. It's something that, that, that suddenly made a mental health issue so real. Such a, such a, a, a human thing to be going through. And that strong emotion, that connection we made that day, stayed with me forever. And it always will do. And I suspect that actually it's going to stay with you for a while. Because it's such a powerful story and it came from an authentic voice. It came from the person who had been going through this pain. If I'd have just related that as a broadcaster, it wouldn't have carried anywhere near as much emotion as it did that day that Pete was talking to me about it. Years later, literally years later, I was finishing a, 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 a job at a particular radio station. I was doing my final programme on air and I played the interview that Pete had done. And the remarkable thing is, he sent me an email saying, I didn't realise that you would remember me. That's the, powerful, that's the power of emotion. That's how powerful emotion can be. The good thing was, he also told me that he was uh, training to be a mental health nurse himself. He'd been well for a very long time. And he'd been getting on with his life. And he was back with his family. Brilliant. So when you think about using presentations as a marketing, as an information, as a communication tool, you need to inject emotion. You need to have emotion in everything you say. Otherwise, it's just going to be one of those 20,000 presentations that that person will see that day.